Well, this has become the main hub where displaced uh, individuals and families are coming to seek medical attention, clothes and food. I've seen a facility for injured pets and behind me here, crucially, a place to come and report missing persons. We're told that inside that shelter there are as many as a thousand people. I've just walked through and seen families with young children, uh, babies, old people, young people, many people lying on stretchers covered in bandages um, from severe burns and all of them now homeless and traumatised by this week's catastrophic wildfires. This was the town of Lahaina, the bustling heart of the island of Maui. Now it's ash, rubble and ruin. A smouldering grid of cinders after fires ripped through this coastal town, leaving homes as empty husks and leaving scores dead and with the death toll still rising. In the grisly aftermath, the streets are littered with the remains of whatever couldn't make it out. Cars abandoned to the flames now form a ghostly traffic jam. As residents come to terms with the disaster, Hawaii's Attorney General announced a comprehensive review into how authorities responded to the fire after many said they were left stranded with no warning sirens as the fires suddenly erupted. The lucky ones who did make it out are now slowly being allowed to return for the first time. In this moment we're just looking for some, everyone to be alive, to be safe. That's all we're trying to do. And the rest, you know, go from there. But there's little to find. This is my house. Um, this is the ash, the remains of my house. But... Sydney Carney used to live here. The reality of the devastation she fled is now just starting to become clear. Seeing it is a lot more real than seeing all the pictures. I walked through my room and there's just nothing. Like, everything is gone. It's really just Lahaina Town is Lahaina Town. Like, that's who we are. We are the old town of Maui. And now we are not even a town. Those who fled the flames are coming to places like this, a sports centre turned shelter to wait for news from the outside. After Hawaii's worst ever disaster, how safe are their homes and how safe are their loved ones? Hundreds lie in makeshift beds as authorities and aid agencies treat the injured and hand out supplies. There I met Sonia, who got out as the wildfires raged next to her home. She only had the clothes she was wearing. Um, it was absolutely terrifying. The smoke was horrible. Um, people are screaming, and, and when we were driving, the power lines are in the road, burning. All of our friends' houses burned down too, because literally 90 or 95 percent of Lahaina is gone. It's burnt to the ground. Down by the boatyard, Maori locals are gathering supplies for those still stuck. It's nice to see it because it's... They didn't got much, but they're giving to everybody around them. I'm sorry. No, it's just, it's amazing. The word aloha does not know bounds. Aloha knows no bounds, and I'm so proud to, to live, live on Maui. People are going to make it. We're going to get through this. The coast, once the symbol of this Taurus idyll, is now a path to get aid to those still battling the flames raging across Hawaii. Well, earlier Siobhan spoke to Dr Guy Sugino, who's been treating the survivors of the fires. What, kind, what kind of burns, what are we seeing here? A lot of patients, or a lot of, uh, of the people coming over here had a lot of uh, injuries from the embers and uh, just running on the hot sidewalk, they got second degree burns on their feet, um, some third degree burns that were being uh, treated here. Uh, so there, well, that's because that's how desperate they were to get out? They had a hard time coming out. A lot of people were swollen from standing in the cold water. They jumped into the ocean uh, to get away from the fire and... So people were having to, the, such was the speed of the fire, having to leave their house and jump into the sea. What have they been telling you? It, it would happen so fast, there was no time to react. By the time they found out that the fire was coming close to them, it was already there. 
there was no time for any emergency alerts or it just was running right through the whole town. And you're a Maori native. Right. Have you ever known anything like this before? I've never seen anything like this. I mean, we've had hurricanes, we've had other fires that have blocked the highways, but not to the level or this extent of injury and loss. And that, that's where the issue is, there's so much loss. And everything we're hearing from the people that we've spoken to today, it's still a very dire, acute situation out there. It's, there are people still There's still in... a lot of people out there that are having access issues and you know they don't have any medications, um, they have injuries that have not been addressed. I mean, a lot of different things because they couldn't escape. You know, people get through this, but it's going to take a long time because of what these people have experienced. Oh, I don't think anybody can experience this except being in a war, because it's just, you, you lose everything, right? And there's nothing to go back to. So just that loss is gonna be significant.